How did you end up um, getting with House of Pain back in the day? Before, because I, I, you, I knew, I knew you guys had a little falling out for a sec. But it was an accident, man. Like I was dating this girl that actually was cousins of Everlast's DJ, mm. and I would go over there, and he'd be at the crib, and I'd be like, "All right." And the Cypress demo, the Cypress, we were signed already, but the album, had, I had the album on a red cassette, and I gave it to her, but the album didn't come out for six months. So the next time I went over there, a couple of times, Everlast was there. Mm. And he was listening to the tape. He's like, yo, we got to get in the studio. I was like, nah, I'm good, man. And after three or four times, I was like, I was talking to B-Real, and B-Real was like, man, just fuck with, fuck with him. I was like, all right. So I went in and did Put Your Head Out mm-hmm. at the crib, and I was like, okay, this is cool. Then the homies was bumping it, and then I was like, all right, I got this song called Jump Around. So I had already recorded it with Sun Doobie. I recorded it with Daddy Freddie from Ragamuffin mm-hmm. Hip Hop, and I had a song, I had the hook. He came in and wrote the shit, and I was like, now nah, rewrite it with that cadence right there. And he wrote the shit, and then we had the joint. And to one of the greatest party songs of all time. <laughs> shop, shop the deal, man. I know Funkmaster Flex wanted to sign us at Priority Records for like, I think it was like 55, 60 Gs. He had special ed over there at the time. I didn't even know Funk Flex worked at Priority. Yeah, he was A&R. Crazy. And then um, it was weird, because Monica Lynch over at Tommy Boy wanted to sign us. And um, so I went and had a meeting with her, and she was like, she was Irish. Mm-hmm. So she's like, this reminds me of my family. This is like my brothers would go to church, then they go to uh, to the bar and get drunk and fight. So she got it mm. right off the bat, you know what I mean? So she signed us. She gave us like three hundred thou back then, and then uh, I hooked them up with our management, the guys who did our our pictures. I hooked them up with those guys, and and David Press who did our video. I hooked mm. them up with them. So it was pretty much the formula. So you kind of just say, here's our formula, run with it. Run with it. And it worked. I mean, work with it. Like, like a motherfucker. Like a motherfucker. Yo, I always wondered, so there was like this era, um, I'm really close with Dilated Peoples and Raka and Ivor Science and Babu and obviously Shout to Oh, Ed. they're the best. Hell yeah. I love those guys. Um, they really opened my world, uh, my taste in another, a whole nother way um, to, to like digging into like different shit that I was into at the time. But I remember as a kid, there was the... Random, because you were close, like you were cool with Paul, obviously, right? You're cool with M, but then there's like this weird beef between like Dilated Peoples, Everlast, and Eminem. <laughs> Did you ever try to like bring those guys together? Nah, it was weird, man. I think I think Everlast, from what I remember correctly, you know, don't quote me here, but I think Everlast seen M on the elevator, and M just didn't say nothing to him. But M's like he didn't look the same. Right, and M didn't realize that he, he, he didn't realize who he was. Maybe right, right, and and M was a fucking Everlast fan, you know, from what I hear. So Everlast just, you know, I don't know what happened. Then he he wrote some shit about him. Yeah, and then I remember there was like the dilated shit, and then Evidence had a song called uh, "Searching for Bobby Fisher." So I was just wondering because you were kind of like it felt like kind of yeah. like Switzerland. You might have, you know, I didn't know if you tried to put a call in. Nah, nah, I just figured all that uh, y'all fucked up. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, fucking with M, like good yeah. luck with that shit, man. Good you know luck. What I mean, like even why. But um, I don't even think I heard the dilated song ever. Yeah, there was an evidence song called "Searching for Bobby Fisher" that was. I don't a, think I heard that one. No, nah, but I had um a Napster hit. Yeah, so yeah, I brought Paul. I remember when I met Paul, I flew him out to L.A. to meet with me, and I had a barbecue um, to manage Cypress, and he came out here, and, and that's how I met Paul because Theo, Theo, Theo was my lawyer, and I was like, "Yo, I need a new manager, bro." And he's like, I "What got year was this?" Before um before um Rock Superstar album. So it was okay, like okay. 2000, 99, yeah, 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 99. Yeah. And I was, he's like, yo, I got this this lawyer. He's got an ear like me. And he's managing this artist, Eminem. Eminem didn't blow up right, yet. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's early. I was like, I flew, flew his ass out, had a barbecue, and locked in with Paul. What what was the, was it label? Like, why did you guys do a rap superstar and a rock superstar difference? Because, um, check this out. So we was up at Columbia, and you know now we're going into the fifth album. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so we'd go to the urban department. That was af- the album after Dr. Green Thumb or before? After. After, that's right, okay. So it was like, yeah, that was four. That was our fifth yeah, album. Okay. Now. So we'd, we'd go up to the label and it was like, all right, let's do this marketing plan. i go to the urban department. It was like, no, no, you guys are you guys are alternative. Like, no, we ain't. So we'd go up to the, we'd go up to the next floor and they was like, oh, no, you guys are the urban department. And uh, they don't work together. And everybody's passing the buck. Nobody wanted to do their fucking job. And I was like, you fucking pieces of shit check this out I'm gonna give you all a rock song and a rap song so now what's your fucking excuse now you, know you can I mean? work one to each you got one you got one so I, I did we had a song called Can't Get the Best of Me and Rap Superstar and then I walked into the meeting with Donnie Einer and he was like no this is the single we're not doing rock song with this is the single 
I'm putting all the money behind this one. I was like, oh, fuck, this ain't going to work. So I went in the studio a couple of days later and did the remix for mm. Black Superstar. Wow, okay. 